Welcome to Guys Talk Knives. I'm Andy. I'm Jason. We did it. We did it. We did it. No giggle. Which is impressive. Hey, it really is. The first take of this, that didn't happen. Uh, I know, right? We I'm still going to say. We did not make it whatsoever. I'm still going to say to pay attention because he's going to drop an axe on that tablet. Yeah, we might. <laughs> and, and nothing hurts like dropping an axe. So in the next episode, if there's no tablet, you'll know why. Right? Exactly. John will be in here just going, four, three, exactly. two. And now he hides in the in the producer's room. We'll have a clipboard. Right. One of the, what are they called? I don't know. I like to call them flackers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't planned. That was the name of my first duck. <laughs> clackers. <laughs> as if I've had many ducks as pets. I'm about to say, did you have a second duck after <laughs> clackers? I did. <laughs> it was clackers junior. You got ducks near your house. I do. Lots of ducks. Living on duck pond. Yes. Yeah, for real. Which, you know, leads me to kind of what we're into here. You know, I say, uh, <laughs> I mean, for dead honest, right? Because okay. we always laugh that I don't go outside, but sure. I love my fire pit. I love it. That's true. I yes. love it. I do fire pit therapy, you know, as much as I can. All the time, yeah. In the fall, in the early spring. It's a little hot right now to do it, but I love to go sit in my backyard, take the axe out there, take the little chopper out there, and just burn things. <laughs> It makes me feel better. <laughs> Luckily, it's a controlled burn in a fire pit. You're not just, you know, just a big mound of oh, stuff in the backyard. You, you would think it's a controlled burn in a fire pit. <laughs> but it's not? No, no, well, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So, no, we, uh, yeah, no, I love that. I love to go out oh, there. Okay. And, you know, part of the therapy is chopping the wood and having a good time. So, the episode sure. today is, let me ask you something. Wow. <laughs> We're wow. looking at camp axes. It and couldn't be I'm better. the one that gets accused of being punny. Oh yeah, well, sometimes that's, it's too good to pass up. You know, I couldn't, no, I couldn't good. help but think of uh, Pesci and Goodfellas. I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. <laughs> we always got to get the movie reference in there. Am I humorous? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. <laughs> that was so much books funny. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> he may have done that. Uh, I think we should try to put Bugs Bunny into Goodfellas. Really, any Joe Pesci. Yeah, any Joe Pesci could he would fit Bugs right Bunny. in. Right, I think he would fit right. My cousin in. Vinny. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It'd be amazing. It's like, no, it's pause attraction. <laughs> <laughs> the five fifty didn't come with pause attraction. And he can play. He can play Marissa Tomei and Joe Pesci. <laughs> Apparently, in my that movie. yeah, my Marissa Tomei was more Ethel Merman at that point. <laughs> <It> really was <laughs> Miss Ethel Merman. No, Jimmy. <laughs> it wasn't like that. If you were a good lawyer, or Edith Bunker off of all the family. Really That's is. what it was. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Oh, goodness. So do, so do you play around with axes and that kind of thing? I do, yeah, because much like you got a fire pit, we've got, you know, we've got about an acre at the house and being new to that house, mm-hmm. cutting down just random crap in the backyard that had to go. Yes. Most definitely. Yeah, it, it makes you, brings out your inner lumberjack. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. Oh, it's, and I, if you're going camping, I mean, any of these would be perfect. And I, you know, I, just having a nice little camp axe around right. for small stuff is tremendous. So that's that's funny that you say that about having the camp axe around uh, and all of that. Because we've been, we released that SE um, JG5. Yes. Yeah, we showed it at Blade Show. It's out there. And so I have a chance to do a little bit of research into George Washington Sears, the writer who wrote in the sure. 1880s about going on canoe trips and taking day trips and that kind of stuff. He was, you know, we focused around and that knife is inspired by the Nesmuk, his Nesmuk, and that was the pen name he wrote under, right? Yes. But what's funny about him is he hated the big knives of those days, the Bowies and the other things that people were carrying. He said, you, you just, I don't need that. No. If, I, if I'm going to chop something, I want an axe. Exactly. Right? He actually disdained that. So his knives were, you know, Skinner knives that were yep. thin bladed, that could easily be carried on your hip, all of sure. that. And he paid big money for his axe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think. So he told me forever. That, Oh, yeah. Right. Big money. So I thought that was kind of crazy cool. You know, but there, there is a certain. It's nice to have that multitasker Mm -hmm. and a knife big enough to do a little bit of everything. Right. But I tend to kind of be the same vein sometimes. Right. I I want something that's designed to do what it's supposed. I mean, you can, you can, for instance, you can trout fish in the Smokies with a spinning reel. Right. But it doesn't do the same thing as working with a fly rod. Right. It's not the same process. It's not the same thought pattern. Um, you don't have the same you don't have the same movement you have 
Well, and you know, we watched James Gibson sit down at the SE counter and show us that when you when you grip up on one of these, exactly, that you're doing your rough work, you know, precisely, precisely, and and, it, and you you get more out of it than you would with a with a knife, of course. And you also you have more you have more steel to work with. You have if you if you actually and the name has left me when you're I got nothing when you're using a, a knife to actually carve off for kindling. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're when you're doing um, feather sticking, yes, this is a lot easier. Yeah, you. I mean, you actually. This is what it's designed for, right? And you have a tool that's yeah, you're letting the weight of the axe do the work. Exactly, it's weighted for the work. It's designed for the work, and you're not damaging a knife that you may want to use for something a little bit more meticulous, like skinning. Right. You know, you use that. You use that enough for for carving kindling up. Right. You're going to destroy that knife. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing too is these are camp axes, so they yes. are of the size that you can strap to your backpack, you know, hang on your hip, and yeah, it's not going to bother you. No, you're not going to feel the weight, and you can carry it all day long on a trail mm-hmm. and not really know that it's that it's there. Right. In my case, you can just set it under the back porch, and exactly, yeah. Right. And the nice thing is, and you, you did a great job when you picked these of kind of going for a range of prices, so I did. That you're not you're not breaking the bank, or you're getting something that may potentially last you and right. your child. And your grandchild a lifetime because this is this thing is right. stout. And after Armageddon, that grandpa's axe there is going to still, still be around. Still going to be here, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The cockroaches will have it. That's right. And after they get done with their Victorinox <laughs> Swiss Champ, I'm telling you. I mean, they'll be right there with Granddad's axe. <laughs> well, the Swiss Champ they're going to wear out quick because <laughs> they're going to they're going to realize, hey, this isn't a multitasker. I guess it actually is a multitasker <laughs> by definition, but uh, we shouldn't be using this the saw nearly this much. That works better. So let's go ahead and start off at the low end. Uh, yeah, I, I want to show the one we have. And we say low end. This thing is made in El Salvador. It's the same. I don't want to drop too much knowledge. It's the same kind of place that Condor makes all their stuff. Uh, well, and I, and I tell you, it is all about the, uh, the, the price point. This None is, of these are inferior. No. At all. No. It's all about price point and what you want to spend. Right. So that's the marbles, right? Yeah, that's the marbles. Now, this is the American Hickory Small Axe. Um, hand forged 1045 high carbon stainless steel. Um, it's an American hickory handle. Got a lanyard hole. It's 12 inches overall made in El Salvador. That is a perfect, right? And yeah, small I, axe. Try to get in there tight on that. But it, I mean, this, it has, you know, everything that you're going to need in a wood handled yeah. axe, American hickory. Yeah. Yeah. So they're shipping American hickory down to El Salvador. Exactly. They're making this thing and hickory holds up. Well, and, and again, this, for a camp axe, for one you're going to keep with your gear, with your tent to take with you on, a, on an overnight camping trip or on a, a a several week hike, this thing's going to hold up to whatever conditions you throw at it. I like the back of the head on this one, the butt of this axe. I'm telling you, I mean that is a nice hammer, right? Sure, there. it is. I mean you can't hammer, you cannot hammer with your survival knife. You're going to have to find a rock, do what you need to do. Exactly. But this thing you're going to carry with you, and you can use it. Tent perfectly. sticks. Oh yeah. Whatever you've got. Yeah. It is an all around, I mean, and that, and it's kind of a classic design, right? On a small <clears throat> camp axe, too. And again, $19.99. I know, that's crazy, bucks. right? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. You, would, you could outfit your whole group for 100 bucks. We have these in the showroom. If you're going to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park to hike overnight, you can't cut down trees <laughs> in the national park, but anything that's laying on the ground is open for kindling, right? So let's this hit- is perfect for that. No, it's great. No, it's great. For that. Let's hit the other one that's in that same price range. For sure. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Go ahead and start You're talking right about it, and I'll hold it up. Now, this is the this is the Shrade Extreme Survival Small Axe. Um, it is a titanium-coated 3CR13 stainless steel axe head. Very it's, modern. Yeah, got a three and three-quarter inch cutting edge on this. Neon green, glass-filled um, PA handle. It glows a little bit after exposure to the sun, so this part is going to glow a little bit hey, in the dark. that's great, though, right? I oh, mean, you perfect. put it down at dusk when you're trying to get your fire ready, and you're you like, oh, where's my axe? Where's you my don't axe? lose it or step on it by accident. Right. Um, I've done that. Uh, it's got an ergonomic, 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 <laughs> an ergonomic handle. Uh, I've heard, so, I fought, I fought ergonam. <laughs> so it's not, your hand's not going to get tired from using this for a long time. Um, it's got, the axe head itself is five and a quarter inch uh, wide. It's a half inch thick. 12 inches overall. It comes with a thermoplastic sheath. What did you just pull out of the bottom? It's got a fire starter. It's got there a ferro go. rod. It's got a ferro rod in the bottom. Yep. Got a cleaver back on the hammer part of this. It's not a cleaver. It looks like a cleaver. I could like pound meat with that. 
That's a tenderizer, <laughs> not a cleaver. A cleaver's for hacking meat. Oh, that's half. true. That's right. Yes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> a tenderizer. Sorry. It's a tenderizer. <clears throat> but this. Hey, Sam Bowie would have used this just fine. Of course. <laughs> uh, I tell you. <laughs> There's a call back to a previous episode. This <clears throat> is the tactical modern version uh-huh. of a very classic right. styled nice small can of Yeah. 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 I, I, I dig mean, it. And again, 20 bucks yeah 1999 you can't you no, can't beat you, it you can't beat it it's great yeah no. and it happens to be one of eighteen thousand products that we have online at yes, smkw.com it yeah it's crazy uh you can find either of those at smkw.com we have to take a little bit of a break right now um i've got to figure out something i'm going to do during this break i need to do it really bad so there's probably a fire axe <laughs> A fire, fire axe, axe. <laughs> a camp axe, and a fire pit somewhere nearby. We're on it today, man. We are on it. Hey, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook with the 90,000 other people that are following us on Facebook. We're doing giveaways every single day, every day, every week, every week, <laughs> every week on both places. And now there'll be uh, giveaways on these YouTube videos as well. Make sure you're subscribing to this. Make sure you're uh, listening to us on iTunes. I mean, right, gotta- uh, right and review us on iTunes too, please. Yeah, we've got a lot of things going. Uh, this is Guys Talk Knives, and we'll be right back. And we're back with Guys Talk Knives. While we were gone, this weird, I know. While we were gone, Andy went outside and whittled a tree down to a pencil with <laughs> this camp axe. It is hard to whittle a pencil. <laughs> a pencil. It's like <laughs> an entire oak. And he just started chopping and chopping and I chopping. Did. I did that Marvel's uh, camp axe did really well. <laughs> if I thought about it, I'd have brought a pencil and been like, I was like this. <laughs> Edward axe hands, just like full on. <laughs> Topiaries. It's amazing. Topiaries. Topiaries with a small camp axe. You're always dropping these words. People are like, I need to find out what topiary is. I know I, oh, what you a topiary them, is. You mean those decorative bushes. That's real cool. Those, those pretty bushes people make stuff. <laughs> I was in Canada recently and they had orcas. Orcas, like orca topiaries. So you had orca the killer bush. And and they had like plants growing out of the top, so it looked <laughs> like they were, you know, the blowholes were going. It was crazy. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Too many blowhole bush jokes to go. Oh, hey, wow. Oh. We need to get into the CRKT yes, we do. before we go any further with that. Let Let's look at a cricket axe. Cricket! Every time. Yep. What was that? It was, was a, a really, it was a really bad cricket. It noise. was. That's You're the, no longer Jiminy Cricket. This this might be one of my favorites on the table. Right. This is the CRKT Pack Axe. Hickory handle, hot forged, ten sixty carbon steel, sixty bucks. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think this is uh, uh, it's something about veterans with this. Yes, yeah, so a veteran too, right? designed this. Um, it has got a lacquer finished handle. Uh, it's Tennessee hickory. In case you were wondering. Um, it's 11.25 inches overall, weighs a little bit more than a pound. Right. Again, that's a classic small camp axe. This was the 1060 carbon, yes? Yeah, this is 1060 carbon. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hold up that um, marbles. Yeah, please do. I was about to say so the same see thing. The, see the size difference there. Cool thing with the CRKT, you do have a, a slimmer design on the head. Um, it weighs a little bit less. Um, the steel is a little bit of an upgrade from the marbles. Right. But I tell you... Th- for me, if I was going to carry a wood handle camp axe, this is probably what I'm going with simply because of the size. Yeah, the size feels really nice. Yeah. You yeah. still have a nice, good striking edge mm-hmm. on the back if you need to use that to hammer something in. Or if you're going to use that uh, batoning was the word I was looking for earlier. Nice. If you're going to use it to baton kindling, you've got a good a good place to hit on the back uh, with another with another piece of wood. Um, right. That is a just a, a perfect design. And for my hand, the handle on this is a little bit better. Right. I have a tendency, though, when the handle is this size, not to say that it doesn't hold up, but I have a tendency to miss. Sure. And I break wooden handles. No, no, of, of course. And I, I, especially as they get, I don't want to say as they get older because it, it, it sounds like they're going to break, but no. you know, if you're using a really, really old axe, which I've done recently, I was using a splitting right. a splitting wedge, came down in the wrong spot, and the, the splitting wedge just went sailing through the yard. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If you treat them like I do and you leave them on the back porch sure. all year round, well, huh, usually they're a little brittle by the time you go chop in the fall again. I was cutting with one that was actually from the farm that my dad grew up on. Uh-huh. So a uh, dry rot had set in <laughs> and it snapped <laughs> when off. When the head goes back the other way yeah. and you're like, oh, where's the thing? 
So I, I went and replaced the handle. Yeah. Um, that all being said, brings us to the next one that oh, is, yeah. is really the, the difference between the I'll price points. i way over here and get this yeah. thing. That is the Topps Grandpa's Axe. Oh, yeah. Look at that thing. Look at that. I dig it. Look at the thickness of that thing. Yeah. That's got to be, what is that, a quarter inch? Yes. Gotta be. It's a chunk of metal. Yeah. It's just, just fantastic. So, so hit, hit the highlights. The, yeah, here's the specs. It's 1095 carbon steel. It's going to hold an edge, and it's gonna, you're going to be able to put an edge on that yeah. without any problem at all, which is, which is fantastic. It's got a green canvas micarta handle, which you all know how much I dig micarta. That's going to change color over time and, and pick up a patina from use. Mm -hmm. um, brown leather sheath comes with it with a belt loop. It has a 4-inch blade length. It has a 4-inch cutting edge. And it's 11 inches overall, so it's a little bit shorter than some of the rest. Sure. As far as the overall length, sure, um, it's going to wear well. I completely love the sheath on this. Yeah. Um, even though I'm a Kydex guy normally, I love the sheath on this. It sits very easily inside there. Right. Uh, you've got a, a loop a nice to go around strap. the back. Right. And with that design, again, you've got plenty of <laughs> you've got plenty of striking edge on the back. And it's going to hold up literally forever. You're going to pass that down from generations. So here's my question. Looking at this thing, what are, what would you do with those holes at the top? Those holes? Mm -hmm. That actually is SOS. These holes? Yeah. Yeah, those holes right there. Those holes are SOS in Morse code. They're on a lot of Topps knives. Okay. So you'll see those. Those are actually, they're actually a. So uh, other than memorizing Morse code or having it written there for me, what am I going to use that for? You're probably not. They're literally just a piece that that Tops puts into a lot of their products huh. to keep counterfeits from jumping. I mean, I guess market. I could strap it to the pack that way, but of course I've got the belt loop and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it, again, it's, I, or I could lash it to a, I could lash it to a, a nice piece of wood and make a hatchet out of it. Make it a like a big a hatchet. Make a big hatchet out of it. Like I can chop frogs up in the creek with that from a distance. Andy has lost his mind. I'm not <laughs> sure why he's. I'm just worried no, about extra holes. It extra holes. Extra holes on this are not. They're not for a purpose. Okay, they're for aesthetics. They are. They're aesthetics. Now, uh, from a I, functional I guarantee you, some, comment and tell him what the holes are for because I bet you money somebody knows what the holes are for. Design feature in Topps knives. Okay, they're well, most I'm of their fixed blade I'm just saying it's got to be useful somehow. Otherwise, they wouldn't put it there. I. Don't know that you're correct about that. <laughs> I, I could may be not wrong. be. I, I could be totally be, wrong. Yes. Somebody let us know. Somebody from Tops, please call and let us know. But I, I do think those are 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 for decorative <laughs> or for aesthetic purposes. So let me ask you something. If you know what that's for, now, cool thing about that it is it there. does it does cut weight. Yeah, it like does. any like any hole in a sure does. and a quarter inch thick steel that's but a lot of weight. In an axe, you don't really want to cut a lot of weight, and that is perfect oh there yeah 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 there is i just i dig notice it. it's on that end too so it's not here where you need the gravity to pull oh, of the, course pull yeah. the blade um yeah. and again you've got a striking surface and i just i i dig that axe so yeah if i had to pick one on the table it would probably be that shrade and, and the reason being i like that it's got the ferro rod sure. in it i beat the hell out of wooden handles exactly and so by that yeah. frn is is my friend um I, I i would take any of the four. Oh yeah any of the four oh, it easily. might depend on what i was doing easily. Um, if it if I want one just to sit with my camping gear and it's not for a long a long trek to the woods or a hike, that shred is probably my pick. Right. Um, for one just to sit outside, that shred is my pick. Yeah. Um, if I'm gonna go hiking, it is either the CRKT or it's that tops. Right. Now that tops. That being said, is one hundred and twenty five dollars. Oh yeah. But you get tops quality, right? American made. And again, tops it's quality. gonna last forever. Right. You have metal. It, it's a full tang. Yeah. Camp yeah, it's axe. one. It's, it's a full a, tank camp axe. Yeah, which sounds ridiculous to say it that way. Right, but it is. It's metal from here to here, and it's all one piece. <clears> and you're not going to have that separation from the head. Right. You're not going to have anything breaking off because there's no separation to be had. Yeah. So uh, again, it's it's fantastic. Right. And the cool thing is, if you don't like these four, there's a whole bunch more on the website. Oh, and you, yeah. You can't you, you type in the word camp axe or small or just axe, type in axe or just axe yeah and just start digging around on the right. website they're right. everywhere they're everywhere and, and ranging in price from you know 15 bucks all the oh, way yeah. up to a couple yeah. hundred bucks so and you it is a case where you get what you where, where you get what you pay for but also you got to know what your purpose is right you know if you need one if you have somebody who's just starting to hike or camp i aim for that marbles right if you just want to uh, you know toy around in the backyard and, sure. and some fire pit therapy 
Get Try one that works for you. Heck yeah. Yeah. Get several. <laughs> That's right. Buy then you can, six. Then no. <laughs> you can set up a stump and just start throwing at them. <laughs> not saying that's not a bad idea. I'm just saying. We might have other axes that are better for throwing right. than these. As a matter of fact, we do. Type in throwing axe. But <laughs> right, no, tell us what you use your axe for. Sure. Yeah, tell us what you use your uh, camp axe for. Which one of these four that you like? Write that down in the comments. You know what I'm going to do? Tell us one we missed. Yeah. yeah. Which one did? Which one should have been on this table? Right. Absolutely. That we missed. But what I'm going to do is if you drop a comment, you're going obvi- uh, to be uh, entered in automatically Ooh. to win... Um, your choice, either the marbles or the shrade. Very cool. Since they're both nineteen ninety nine, we'll let you have a choice. Heck yeah. We're not going to give them both away, but we'll let you have a choice. So, you know, tell us about your, your axe. Tell us which one you didn't have. Tell us something about those that are there. Can I enter to win? No. Employees are not eligible. God. Always take away my fun. Dude, I'm like itching here for some reason. I'm itching because it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> guys we are brought to you by smoky mountain knife works smkw.com we are the largest knife store you need to come visit us Hundred eight thousand square feet Hundred eighty thousand. Hundred. Uh, are you sure i thought it was 180 i'm pretty sure it's 108,000 square oh, feet of it's showroom 100, it's huge anytime you get to that point it's big yeah when it takes you two to three hours just to go through it by one one fell that swoop is, yeah it's sure. crazy yeah, that that, sure. that's their 18,000 products online uh, and growing every single day. Every Flash day. sales every day, 9 a.m. Yep. to 9 p.m. daily. Uh, we just added a brand new search filter feature to the website, and it yes. is beautiful. It's pretty. It is beautiful. It is pretty. It is awesome. Follow us here, guys. Subscribe to this channel. It's, it's down there. Down there. Ring the bell. Ding, ding. ding. <laughs> follow us on Instagram follow us on Twitter follow us on Facebook you never know what you're going to see you never know what you're going to find yo Tommy I didn't hear no bell <laughs> every time <laughs> it's every, every time, time you say it. <laughs> every time guys this is Guys Talk Knives we'll catch you next time <laughs> <laughs>